crazy, right? It was wild. It was it was insane. And for me, I took on uh, the role of really managing alongside of Macy. Uh, we were managing our online services. And the way we used to do it, it wasn't always a live stream that was so easy to do and so easy to watch. But we actually had to record separately. As a matter of fact, when we first started, we would record the... Um, we would record the, the video, we would record the audio on the soundboard, and then we would have to match where the clap was. That's why there was so many claps at the beginning. We'd have to match where the claps was on the video with the sound to make sure that it would line up. And not all the time it would do that, and it was just crazy how, how we did all of the, the filming and recording. We did so much recording in this room. It was so crazy. It was empty. I hated it. But... um. But the, one, of my, my, one of my jobs was to take the finished product that Macy edited and actually upload it to Facebook and YouTube. And there was one week, we called it Production Hell. You remember this? You remember exactly what I'm talking about. We were trying to record a Sunday service. I think it might have even been Easter. It, Mother's Day, that's what it was. And so we were, we were trying to record this, and there was a clip missing. Uh, like the audio was missing. So we rendered this entire video. It took two hours at that point to render the videos. And so we render it, and it's missing this audio. So we're like, whatever. So we go in, and you can see the audio file, and you see it's there, and it would play back there, and we're like, awesome, we got it. We rendered it again, so now that's four hours of rendering, and it still wasn't there. So we're like, what the heck? Like, why is this? So we did it again, and it finally, after six hours of rendering time only, we finally got it to go. So it wasn't until, like, Friday night, because <laughs> Pastor Mike, as I love him to death, but there would be times where he would record on, like, a Tuesday, and then he'd go, actually, I didn't like that. Let's record it again on, like, a Thursday. I'm like, I love it. Uh, so much fun. Uh, so anyway, so this week in particular, because of the rendering issues, because of the re-recording, all of that stuff, we didn't get done with editing until Saturday afternoon. Which, if you're uploading a message in a Sunday service and you're only online and you're on uploading it for Sunday, Saturday afternoon is not an ideal time to be done with editing. So, as if that wasn't bad enough, as if it wasn't bad enough, there's more. We go home and I go to upload it. And what I would do is I would just upload it to Facebook and YouTube and get it ready to go. And I would just go to bed. I would do it at night. And this day in particular, because we didn't get it done until Saturday afternoon, I just uploaded it. And it would take forever to upload. And uh, so I would upload it. It was all good, ready to go. And the next morning, all I would do is hit it. It was ready to premiere. Everybody gets to go to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. Um, except I hit upload. And, uh, and it started and everything, and I went to bed. You already know where this is going. Uh, so I wake up the next morning, and something had caused the video file to stop uploading at, like, 97%. And I was like, okay. So Sunday morning, we come. Then, as if that wasn't enough, we were staying at Macy's parents' house, and the internet, something was wonky with the internet, and it wouldn't let me upload Mother's Day service. I'm like, this is important. We have to do this. I don't know if you guys know, some of the interns do, some of the leaders know where Pastor Mike and, and Elisa live. Um, it is as far into, of course you would know. Uh, 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 it's as far into Prescott as you can go. It's like probably 35 minutes from there to, to the church. And so I said, okay. Uh, service is in like an hour and a half. What do I do? And they said, uh, I said, I'm taking the laptop and I'm going to the church and uploading this thing. So I took it. I ran. I, I got in my car. I drove down here. I uploaded the video and I had like two minutes until we were supposed to like, because you can only have a certain amount of time. Like you, you can't premiere a video unless it's 30 minutes out. And so I, it was like, you know, however long it was, I only had two minutes before I couldn't premiere the video on time. And it was at like 96%. And I'm looking and I'm turning off like all of the computers and everything else to like take off the bandwidth. I'm like, we are getting this ready to go. It was the most stressful 48 hours of my life. Like, it, it was terrible. We got it uploaded. Nobody missed a beat and it was fine and it was great. I actually missed that service though because I was driving back from having to upload it here. So that was kind of a bummer. But I remember like how hard that was 
to get that video ready to go. And now we do so much online. We know what to do. I know what to do. Um, if you watch any of our online content, it's down to a, a rhythm so much so that I can hit render and I know when to check it to see if it's going to stall out. I know when to, to go back to it. I know when to re-upload it. I know all of that stuff. And I don't have to work as hard as I used to. Here's the cool thing about that. The video still gets uploaded the same way that the video got uploaded that time. There's just a lot happening behind the scenes, right? I don't have to work as hard now when I'm editing and rendering videos as we did in that week. You see, sometimes I think that we get in, in and we think in our own minds and we think in our own uh, just life that if we work really hard and we're always busy and we're always doing things, that that means that we're in a better spot. That means that we're, we, we, we're actually working. We're actually productive. But I'm just as productive, if not more productive, watching the render go, not running around going crazy trying to find everywhere to upload and all this stuff. Like, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can just sit. I know exactly what spots to record at. And I've got it into such a rhythm that I, I don't have to work as hard. But I'm still productive, right? I'm still, I'm still working. I'm still doing that. And so we're going to head into the second part of this work and rest series, hitting into rest, because I think it's important to not lose sight of the fact that we have to work hard, but we also have to find places and times where we can get real rest. You see, sometimes working hard isn't how we're supposed to grow. Sometimes working hard, running crazy, driving ourselves up a wall is not actually what God wants for us to do. And sometimes just by resting, just by sitting alone with God and being with him, we're actually doing the very thing that he wants us to do, right? Sometimes there are seasons and there are times where it is important to work hard. It is important to run up a wall and try to drive 35 minutes to a church to upload a service. And sometimes that's appropriate. But there are also times where you can sit and rest. And I feel unproductive when I'm doing what I'm doing now. But I'm still doing the same thing as I was. Sometimes we need rest. And so sometimes the right thing to do is actually not doing anything at all. We have to find the balance between hard work and real rest. And so we're going to go to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. If you have your Bibles, bonus points for you. I love carrying my Bible. I love having my Bible. If you don't have a Bible, there's one up here. I've provided one in the sky. It's a sky Bible. Um, yeah. So uh, we're going to be in Luke. I love Luke. Uh, if you know me, I preach out of Luke a lot. Uh, I love it. It's my favorite gospel. I just love the style. I love the tone. I love the theme. I love what he talks about. I love how he talks. He's amazing. Um, but what we're going to do is read in um, uh, Luke chapter 10 a story about Mary and Martha. Now, where do you guys know Mary and Martha from normally, like the big story? Or the, 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 the most uh, uh, well-known story with Mary and Martha? Uh, no. Yes. No. No. That's actually the one we're talking about. But what's the, what's the other one? Anybody know? Starts with an L. Lazarus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get it now. Read your Bibles. I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I know you guys do. I know you guys do. Uh, so, yeah, so, so we know Mary and Martha because of the story of Lazarus, and that's what a lot of people like to, to talk about. But we're actually talking about what Ethan is talking about, and that is just, just working uh, and, and just driving themselves up a wall. And so we're going to talk uh, uh, and read this story. It's in uh, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. This is what it says. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way. Everybody say, on their way. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all of the preparations that had to be made. And she asked him, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all of the work by myself? Tell her to help me. 
Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better. Everybody say what is better. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Would you guys just pray with me? Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are good. I thank you um, that you have brought us together again to be able to, um, to listen to, to what it is that, that you would want to speak to us. I pray that, you're, um, that this message would speak to the hearts and the lives of every student and every parent, every leader that is here. Lord, I pray that you would do um, everything that you want to do in this time. Lord, and that you would be glorified, that, that you would be honored through the word that is spoken. I pray um, that you would do whatever it is that you want to do. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So this story, like I said, it's, it's not as well known as, as a story like Lazarus, right? But it's still really important because this story gives us a perfect depiction of a work-rest balance. Right? We've been talking over the last few weeks a lot about work, right? We've been talking, uh, uh, Jesse gave an amazing uh, message last week. Uh, before that, you had snow, hallelujah. Um, and then uh, we've just been really hammering home. you got to work hard, right? You, the Lord honors good work, right? Your, your calling is not what you do, but it's, it, but it's who you are in, in Jesus and who he's called you to be, right? We, we talked a lot about work and how it's important to be doing things, but I think that as you learn about doing things, especially doing things for God, you have to be able to also rest in him. And so this is what I, I kind of want to build as the foundation of rest. And, and it's a, like I said, it's a perfect depiction of a work-life or work-rest balance. See, there are a few things that I want to kind of go over. Um, the first being this, is that from this story, we can understand that we have to not just slow down. We can't slow down, but we have to actually sit down. Don't ever fool yourself into thinking that you can slow down. Actually take time to sit down. You see, Martha, her service got in the way of her sitting at Jesus' feet. The service that she wanted to give to God actually got in the way of sitting at Jesus' feet and being able to hear from him. You see, while Martha was trying to slow down, she was. She wasn't working as hard as probably she could have been. But she was working and trying to slow down and still get bits and pieces of what Jesus had to say. While also getting some things done because she felt like she had to prepare things for him. You see, she had all this work to do. To do everything she could to make Jesus comfortable. But what Jesus actually wanted was for her to do what Mary was doing and just sit at his feet and just listen to him. Hang on every word that he said. We can't just slow down. We have to sit down. You see, we have to have a heart that is focused on Jesus. We can't make ourselves busy and try to be good enough. We can't, we can't busy ourselves and make us think that like, oh, if I look the part, then I'll be good, right? We can't just fool ourselves into thinking, oh, I can work um, to, to, to make Jesus comfortable. I, I, I think that there were plenty of things uh, that, that you can meet uh, the physical needs of somebody. But, but ultimately, it, it's up to the Lord to meet spiritual needs, to, to heal hearts, to bring freedom, to do all of those things. So while she's trying to tend to the physical needs of Jesus in that moment, what Jesus was saying is, hey, I, I want to actually take care of you spiritually. Would you, would you come and would you be with me? You see, if we juggle too much, if we juggle too much, we start to distance ourselves from the Lord. Just more and more comes out on our plate. We, we're, we're more and more busy. We're more and more scheduled out. I can't tell you how crazy it is. If you, and a lot of you guys will, will already get this from break, but it, it, it ramps up, especially when you get uh, like a big boy full-time job somewhere. If you are ever trying to plan a vacation, you have to work twice as hard to leave for that vacation, and then you have to work twice as hard when you come back from that vacation. But the thing with that, though, is that if you juggle too much, you start to distance yourself because you get buried into whatever it is that you're doing. So you can't 
do that. You have to be able to listen to the Lord. The enemy, right, Satan would love nothing more than for us to live busy, 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 busy lives. To, to always be distracted by something that we forget who we are in Jesus, that we forget our identity, that we forget the things that, that Jesus is actually wanting to speak through us and to us, that, that, that we would be so busy that we would start to distance ourselves from the Lord. Satan would love nothing more than that. And guess what? It can even be good things. Did you guys know that, that, that you can get too busy and actually walk away from the Lord while you're still in church? Do you know that you could get too busy in joining every student leadership team and joining every Youth Alive Club and joining everything uh, that, that, that you start to actually distance yourself from the Lord? And then what happens is you get to the end of a, of, of a high school or a middle school experience and you go, okay, well, now I'm like all fake and fabricated and it feels like a phony sham and I, I don't like this and how did I even get here? And it's because we start playing the role. We start doing things. We start, you know, I'm not saying service is bad. I'm not saying work is bad. We've been speaking about it for a couple of weeks now. Like it's important, but not at the, at the sacrifice of distancing yourself from the Lord. That's why I say, like, we, we think that we're getting ourselves ramped up and we're so busy, and it's so awesome how busy we are. Look at everything that I'm doing. When in reality, maybe that's not what God has for you. Maybe he just wants you to sit down. That doesn't mean don't clean your room, okay? I just <laughs> want to be clear on that, okay? I, I'm, I'm sitting and resting with the Lord. I don't got to clean my room, Mom. That's not going to fly, okay? Just want to let you guys know. But, like, I, I, um, I don't know about you, but I uh, really love uh, TV shows and movies. Um, it's just who I am. Uh, Obi-Wan uh, Kenobi, the, the trailer came out today. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Super pumped. Ready to go. Love Star Wars. I'm a nerd. Um, but TV, TV shows and movies are kind of the same thing, right? I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because I have an aunt, right? I was just home for a couple weeks. I have an aunt who's like, it's all the same. I'm going to sleep through all of it, okay? I don't care. But... If you love movies, if you love TV shows, you'll know that they're not the same. What, what, what the difference, there's a couple of, uh, of differences, and that is that TV shows typically tell a story over a longer span, right? You tell a story over 12 seasons, that's longer than a two and a half hour movie, right? And TV shows are really cool because of that, because they tell a longer story and they, they get deeper. And that's why people get hooked on shows. And then you have things like Netflix and you can binge an entire series of 1,600 seasons and, you know, all of this stuff. Um, there's a show, I don't know if you guys know, it's sci-fi. Um, I feel like you're the only one who might know this, but Stargate. Stargate, okay, yeah. So Stargate has like, oh, really? Awesome, let's go. All right, Nerds unite. Let's go. Uh, but like Stargate, I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know how many seasons there are. But it ran for like twelve years. Like not just seasons, but like twelve years. And I remember there was a, a guy in uh, my my dorm who was like, "I'm going to do the whole thing in a semester." I'm like, "Dude, you're crazy." So like we would literally have these marathons. It was insane. But what's crazy about shows like that is they will take entire like plots and, and storylines and just expand them out over four, five, six, seven, eight episodes. And the thing with a TV show is you, you actually can, can miss a couple episodes and still be okay. You might miss out on some things, but like there's slow TV episodes. Sometimes it only focuses on one or two characters and you're like, okay, I don't need this. I'll flip on to the next one. Sometimes in some, some TV shows, you can miss entire seasons and be okay. Be like, I don't know how this happened, but okay, I'll, I'll roll with it. Like, let's keep going. And so TV shows, they don't require a lot of your time. You can watch them casually. You can watch them and be on your phone or uh, be in a conversation or do whatever. But with movies, right, we have entire movie theaters where you go into a dark room with a big screen and you are quiet for two, two hours. And, and if somebody else is talking... They get really annoying, and you go back and you tell them about Jesus, you know? Uh, I'm kidding. But seriously, you're like, hey, stop it. Stop. I'm trying to do this. I paid $2,200 to come see this thing. Like, 
that's, I think, the price of popcorn. I think the estimated price right there. But, um, but what's, what's so cool about a movie is it, it requires your undivided attention. And, and most of the time, it tells a complete story in the two hours or three hours or one and a half hours. Like, it, it tells you a, a, a whole story. Most of the time, if a movie is really good, you don't even want to go to the bathroom. Because you're like, okay, I can wait. I, th- I can wait. What's the runtime on this? Okay, we got 20 minutes. All right, I can hold it. I can do it. I can do this. I can do this. If there is a good movie, you don't want to miss out on it. And the reason why I say that, the reason why I go off on that tangent about movies and TV shows, is to say that, that we should treat our relationship with God as if it's the greatest movie ever. We should be so infatuated with him, hanging on every single word, that we're sitting in our seats theoretically. We're sitting in our seats, and we're not wanting to leave the theater. We can't, we can't treat our relationship with God and, and, and treat our relationship with, with, with even other people as they're trying to encourage us, as they're trying to, 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 to speak life into us. We can't treat it as if it's a casual TV show that we're just going to be on our phone while, while, we're, while we're doing this. Which is what Martha was trying to do. She's trying to do all of this work while also listening to Jesus. And I'll just hear every little bit. Oh, well, that's a thing. Um, The other thing that we have to know and we have to, to take from this is that we don't just hear. Listen to this. This is important. We don't just hear, but we listen. We don't just hear from God. We don't, just, we don't just take time to, to hear what he says, but we actually take time to listen. This is how we rest. This is how we find that balance between working really hard and finding real rest in Jesus. See, Martha wanted to hear Jesus just like Mary did, but she had focus on making sure everything was prepared around him that it made impossible to actually listen to Jesus. To actually be able to hang on the words of Jesus. She let the tasks and the circumstances around her keep her from listening in on every word that Jesus was speaking. I don't know about you, but if you were able to, to, to put yourself in, in, in the, in not in the story, but, but in the circumstance of listening to Jesus. If Jesus is wanting to speak to you, I want to listen. I don't want to hear him. I want to listen to him. I want to hear intently. I want to be able to, to focus in on him. Because a lot of times, all right, I'm, I'm going to be real here. A lot of times we like to say that, that we hear from God. We like to say, oh, I heard this, this thing from the Lord, and, and I heard this from, from God, and, and, and I've heard him, and, I, and I'm, I'm moving in this direction. But we're also living distracted. So the thing that we heard from God actually wasn't from God. We just thought it was because we weren't actually paying attention. We weren't actually listening in. We just heard and we were like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. So I think that's from the Lord. So I'm just going to run with it. No, 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 no. We have to listen in. We have to know his voice. We have to be able to hang on every word that he has for us. We can't just tune out and tune back in and think that we have it. And a lot of times, in a lot of places, people will say, oh, I heard this from the Lord. But they actually didn't because they're so distracted by everything around them. We can't live distracted. We have to be comfortable with not doing anything other than listening to him. We, can't be, we have to be comfortable with being able to do this. It's pretty hard, isn't it? Already, there's distractions. We have to be comfortable in the silence. We have to be comfortable in, in, in being able to just set aside time to hear and listen from God. You see, I, I don't know about you, but I'm in the camp that I don't want to, to, to catch God's plan and God's, God's purpose for me. I, I, I don't want to miss out on that because I'm not intentionally listening. I don't want to hear that on the fly. That's not something that I want to be uh, just like, oh, yeah, well, I guess, like, I missed an episode, right? Back into that analogy. I guess I missed an episode, but I'll, I'll tune back in. It'll be okay. 
I want to hear everything that he has for me. I want to be able to know the very voice of God. I want to be able, hold on, I want to be able to tell that when people pray for me, and I'm not saying that your youth leaders are going to do this because your youth leaders are awesome. Your parents are awesome. But I don't want to go to a conference with a friend that I heard about and have somebody pray and prophesy over me and me think that that was actually from God when in reality it wasn't. It was somebody wanting to show off. I've had a ton of people. It was a dude, after I just received my calling, I was on the, 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 the most fire I felt like I had ever been, right? I'm just really on that spiritual high. And I have this dude lay hands on me, and he prayed for me. And he was like, you are running from stuff, and you are doing this. And I'm like, dude, you do not know. You do not know. And he was so trying to, 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 to force kind of what he probably thought God was speaking over in me. And I'm like, dude, I'm not receiving this, like. This isn't where I'm at. It's not a confirmation. This is, this is just you saying whatever. I'm not taking that. You see, if we would actually take time, even if it feels like it's a waste, right? I, I bet anybody who watches this video online will look at that and go, okay, why is he just sitting there for like 10 seconds? This is a waste of time. I'm going to skip through it. Even if it feels like a waste of time, it's not. Because if you can sit and listen to, to God and you can, you can hear him and he starts to give you revelation and he starts to give you purpose and he starts to give you identity and he starts to do all of these things, man, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I took the five minutes, the 10 minutes, the 15 minutes, the however long, 30 seconds. I'm so glad I took that to be able to hear, to be able to listen intently on what God is wanting to speak to me. I was at home over the past couple of weeks. Uh, first off, give, give a, a shout out, give a round of applause to all of these amazing youth leaders um, just for, yeah, come on. I'm so, I'm so happy and so thankful for you guys, um, and you guys have amazing youth leaders because um, there's not a whole lot of youth ministries, there's not a whole lot of ministries in, in churches in general where somebody like me can take a step out and, and, and actually be with family or do something and have everything run seamless. And uh, I'm just so proud and so thankful for all of you guys. And um, I just want to let you guys know that. But I was at home, and uh, I'm going to be honest, I was a bad son. I believe what you said, son. <laughs> this man said, I believe that. See me after, see me after class. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so I was, I was a bad son. Um. My mom uh, was, uh, would, would be talking with me. We shared a, a, her van. I dropped her off at school. That was a funny role reversal because I didn't get a, a, a car while I was down there. So, like, literally, I would get up with her. I would drive. She would drive to work, and then she would get out, and I, I got to roll the window down and do the, bye, sweetie, have a good day at school. <laughs> like, it's hilarious. Drive off in her minivan, pick her up. Hey, <laughs> did you have a good day? Oh, it was just so good. So. I loved it, but uh, I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. I was I was bad because there was a couple things, there was a couple times when mom would be like, "Okay, hey, I want I want you I want you to listen in because you got to pick me up at this certain place and this certain time, and I want you to know." And I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I was answering text messages and from my phone and stuff. I know, I know. Here's 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 the problem though. My mom knew exactly what was happening because she would get like halfway through what she was trying to say, and she would go, "You didn't hear me, did you?" I go, "Huh?" <laughs> and she would go, "You didn't hear me, did you?" Uh, oh yeah, I heard, I heard. She goes, "What did I say?" Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Can you can you repeat that? And she's like, "No, we'll talk about it later." Like she was so mad at me. I'm sorry. It was really bad. She's like, "You didn't hear that, did you?" But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I heard her. I just didn't listen. I heard the voice. I, I heard her speaking. And I could probably, if I'm being honest, I, I know my mom well enough. I could probably be like, I think I know what you were saying. I can move around with that. I, nope, that's not going to work. Because here's the thing. We have to be able to listen. So my mom was like, you're not listening, are you? I'm like, no, I'm not. Sorry. And, uh, and then we'd hash it out. And she'd be like, Give me your phone. I'm like, I am 25 years old. We're not doing this. We, we did it. It's fine. Um, <laughs> she's still my mom. Come on. Um, 
But while I, was, while I was hearing her voice, I didn't take it in and I didn't listen to what she was saying. And sometimes we do that so often with God. Where we're like, I hear your voice. I hear something. I, I, I'm able to hear that much. But I'm not tuned in enough to actually listen to what it is that you're speaking and what it is that you're saying. The last thing is this. Uh, I got a little bit of time. I'll, I'll call worship team up. I'll remember, I promise. Um, and then if I don't, you guys can boo me. So, um, <laughs> see, I, I say that, and I know it's going to happen if I forget. So it's really sad. Um, <laughs> the last thing is this, that we can't waste time. Don't waste time. Find time. Don't waste time. Find time. See, Martha was so easily distracted by all of the less important things. And sometimes those less important things actually choke out the very word that God is wanting to speak to you. Just wanting to choke out what God is wanting to to bring you and and, and speak over you. And what I love about Jesus' response when, when Martha's like, hey, she's not doing nothing. Like, tell her to help me, please. He says, hey, 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 what you're doing isn't bad. Right? He affirms her. That's good. Don't hear these last few weeks about work and go, okay, now we don't have to do that. I can chill. <laughs> like, don't, like, don't hear that. Don't hear that. But, but what he says is, he says, hey, it, that, that's, that's okay. What you're doing is okay. It's fine. But there's actually something better. Mary is doing what is better. Mary is doing what is better. There's something better for Martha to do in that moment. It wasn't to work and make Jesus comfortable in the moment. It was to sit at his feet and to listen to him. Don't busy yourself with things that are so unimportant just so you can look a certain part. Don't look at things and be like, man, if I can stack this chair, if I can put this, this ping pong table away, if I can preach a message, if I can be on the worship team, if I can join fine arts, if I can go to camp, if I can do all of the things that make it seem like I'm looking the part. Don't get caught up in that. Sometimes it's better to just shut off and rest in Jesus. Rest at his feet. Don't busy yourself with all of those things Get away and draw close to Jesus and rest in him because I guarantee you that if you rest in Jesus, even if there's so many things on your to-do list, if you would rest in Jesus, everything else takes care of itself. If you rest in Jesus, everything takes care of itself. You don't have to worry about those things. Now, there might be things that you still have to get done. I'm speaking to somebody who has a homework assignment that you have to do tomorrow. I don't know. Who has homework tomorrow? Come on, let's be real. Who hasn't done it yet? Come on. Uh, see? See? Come on. Come on. I know. I know. Like, sometimes there are, there are things. That, I'm not saying don't ever get it done. But there are things that in the moment you don't have to get done now. You're just saying, hey, this can wait. Did you guys know, that? and we've been talking about this as a church staff, and I love it because it has relieved me of so much stuff. Did you know that there is even church work, there is even good work, there is even godly work that God has given you that you don't have to do right now in the moment? Did you know that, that there are some times where, where, where and, and I'm not saying every time, okay, don't take this as a rule and be like, I don't got to do nothing in the moment no more, okay? Don't hear that. But there are some times where you can wait to pray with somebody tomorrow. There are some some meetings that you can take with people tomorrow. Because here's the thing. Ultimately, and this is what we've been learning as a staff, and I love it. Ultimately, are we in charge or is God in charge? God. So, so, so if I truly believe that God is, is over all and he has all authority and he has all power and he has all of, of, of everything, all of the tools to be able to handle situations, am I always necessary? No. I'm not. We're not. Sometimes we can get so caught up. If I'm, I'm not doing anything. Martha was looking around and going, Mary's just sitting there. Get a broom or something. Come on, girl. Help me out. 
But if we prioritize the time that we spend with God, if we don't flippantly read our Bible as we answer every single text, I've tried you version. It don't work. I even have it set up to do not disturb. And I'm still like reading a verse. And I'm like, ding. Oh, okay. Um, let me just, let me just check that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Let me do some scroll, 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 scroll. Let me read another verse. <laughs> I don't work. Like, we have to be able to be comfortable to find time to rest in the Father. Because like what I said, it is never wasteful if we would do that. How many people have ever heard um, from a teacher or from another classmate or from a parent even that uh, sleep is for the week? Have you ever heard of that? And there are some people who would like to say sleep for a week. That's my motto. <laughs> sleep for a week. Sleep is for the week. I think my wife is one of those kind of people. I'll sleep when I'm dead. Who's heard that? I sleep when I'm dead. Or what about this? This is this is especially tailored for you guys. Who, who has a bedtime? Come on, be honest. I have a bedtime too. Don't worry. I had a bedtime of 9:30 when I was in high school. So let's just be real, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be real. How many people? Even if you you might not have a bedtime, but you did not so long ago. How many people have ever been like? Time for bed. I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to do that. Right? Like, we live in a culture where it's like all of these things are like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to rest. I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to do this. But guess what? Check this out. Check this out. Listen in. If you get hurt, if you get injured, if you go to a hospital, after they give you all of the the, 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 the painkillers and the narcotics and the, and the, and the morphine and the, the, all the good stuff, right? <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. After they give you that, if that stuff doesn't work or if they, or if they don't give you that stuff, what do they say? Get some rest. Get some sleep. Go to bed. Right? We look at all of this stuff, and we see it in all of these situations where I'm like, I don't want to do that. That's wasteful. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But the minute that you're in need, you actually need rest. You actually need sleep. You don't actually see the priority. You don't see the value until you need it. Until you need it. We have to be in a place where we see the value of rest where we see the value of slowing things down, where we see the value in not being busy for busy's sake, where we see the, the value in being able to rest. If the worship team would call, go ahead and come on up. Yes, thank you. Turn me up now. Thank you. Focus in. Focus in, because this is important. Listen, I want you guys to know I want you guys to know, I want worship team, I want you guys to know. If nobody's ever said this to you, write it down. It's important. You are more important than what you do. You are more important than what you do. You can never, and you guys know this, you can never work hard enough to earn anything from God. You have it all. We have access through Jesus to everything that we need. We, get, we don't have to earn this stuff. Work is important. I'm not saying that. Work is important, but not at the expense of losing your relationship or, or, or dampening your relationship with the Lord. Not the sacrifice of, of slowly slipping away from, from what God is, is wanting to draw you in close to. We have to find the balance between working hard and finding real rest. And I hate to tell it to you guys because I know this is what everybody wants to say. I can multitask. No, you can't. No, you can't. You can't multitask. Not with this. Even the people who think they can, you can't do it. 
We have to learn to rest in God. If we can learn this discipline of being able to rest in him, we can start to be able to know him more and to know his heart for us and have him speak into the very things that we need him to speak into. I don't know if you guys knew this. Newsflash. We're human beings. Woohoo! Here's why I say that. It sounds like such a duh, right? Here's why I say that. Because we get caught in a cycle, and as you get older, and as you get more stressed, and as you get more busy, you get caught in a cycle where you feel more like a human doing. We are not human doings. If we're always busy, if we're always distracted, we have to be able to hold on to the fact that we know that, that, that our doing has a purpose because of our being. The doing that we, that we have, the, 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 the ability to work is because of our being. God doesn't care about what you do. He cares about who you are. When Jesus invites us to follow him, he doesn't want us to just work and work ourselves into all of this overtime hours in, this, in the kingdom. We have to work. We have to, to work in his strength, not our own. If we're working in our own and we're finding ourselves tired and weary and worn down, what he's saying is, hey, would you come and would you just sit at my feet? Would you just be with me? Would you just give me your undivided attention because I want to speak to you. I want to speak. I want to speak things over you. I want to speak to the situations that you're facing. I want to speak to the things that, that I, need to, 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 I need you to do. <laughs> but you have to take time to, to actually sit at his feet and actually rest in him. If you guys would bow your head and close your eyes. Tonight, if um, it's really simple. Tonight, if you would say, hey, I, I feel like I have been running in a hamster wheel. And it can be schoolwork. It can be family pressure. It, 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 I'm going to be honest. It might not even be real, but it's real to you. It might not be real to anybody else, but it is so real to you. Maybe it's an expectation or a weight that you've put on yourself. Maybe it's something that you say, man, I, I, I'm holding myself to a standard that, that maybe nobody else knows about. You find yourself working and working and working, and it's so hard to, to keep up, and it's so hard to do this. I want to invite you to just sit and rest at Jesus' feet. The Lord is saying, would you, would you just rest in me tonight? I'm all you need. Tonight, if you would say, I have been so busy. I have worked myself into such a frenzy that I just need to rest tonight. If that's you, would you raise your hand? <laughs> I'm raising mine. Work yourself so hard. I, like, I, like I said, there's nothing that you can do to earn anything more from God is already there. So Lord, tonight I, I ask that you, for everyone who has raised their hand and for those maybe who are feeling it but didn't, Lord, I pray that you would just be able to speak uh, uh, and, and comfort the hearts of, of students and parents and leaders who are here tonight. Lord, that that you would, would allow us to, to sit at your feet while we work. And while that might be good and while that might be just, just fine and dandy, Lord, there are things and there are times and there are seasons where you want us to sit and rest. And so, Lord, I pray that you would, would allow us to be able to recognize where we need to slow down where we need to, to ease up on ourselves, where we need to uh, allow ourselves to lean completely into you, to just sit at your feet and hear what it is that you have for us. Lord, I pray that you would, I pray that you would just bless each and every student as they step out obediently in this. Lord, that they would be able to, to tune their hearts and tune their ears to everything it is that you are speaking to them. That they wouldn't just hear you, but they would listen to you. That they wouldn't slow down, but they would sit down. They wouldn't just 
waste time doing all of this stuff, but they would actually find the time to be able to be with you. Lord, we love you. We thank you. I pray that this word would be sealed tonight in the hearts of every person in this place. Lord, I thank you that you are a God who doesn't look at a time card. You don't look at when we're clocking in or clocking out. You don't, you don't look at any of that. You, you love us. And, and, and above anything else, when we are tired, when we are weary, you say, come to me. Give me your burdens, for, for, for my load is light. My yoke is easy. We thank you that, that we can serve you, that we can be with you, that we can have that relationship with you. But I pray that we would just engage in worship with you, that we would be able to, to truly hear from you, to, to truly listen in on what it is that you're wanting to do over this, this time of, of, of response. Thank you for each and every student, parent, and leader that is here tonight. We seal all of these things in Jesus' name. Everybody said.